Jane Curtis is here in the studio with me today, and we're going to be talking about some very special people who have made history through the years. Jane, you want to take it up? That's what I've come for, to tell okay. you all about the Special Olympics. Right. Uh, I think that good subject, and it's one that actually hasn't gotten as much press coverage as one would expect. This year I didn't see a thing. Somebody to told me it had uh, appeared on uh, Good Morning America, yeah. George Stephanopoulos. I haven't seen much on it either. But I haven't, seen, not a word on CNN, not a word on you know, the main networks. Uh, so I don't know why. Well, when, when is it going to occur this year? Well, it did occur. Oh, it's already been. It occurred the 1st through the 6th of July. Oh, okay. Uh, they really did not cover it this year, They, did they? really didn't, and I just don't understand why. But the, it, it's a venerable thing now. It's been around, as we know, this being the 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary. That it has been around. Okay, I um, didn't realize it was that long. 1968, uh, which was a year of a lot of bad things and chaos. That was the year Martin Luther King mm -hmm. was assassinated in April, and Robert Kennedy was so assassinated in uh, June, uh -huh. two months later. So these difficult things. Um, that did not hold back the Kennedys, however. This, this uh, history of the Special Olympics is, to some extent, a history, uh, a tale of two women, okay. as it were. Uh, because the, uh, the first woman who really got the idea to do it on this scale was one who got very, very little publicity ever and never seemed to mind it. But the other was Eunice Kennedy, Eunice right. Kennedy Shriver. Right. And she is still listed as the founder. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was uh, Kennedy, Kennedy money and her participation. But the, before her came another woman. And we'll perhaps get on to her in a moment. Uh, let's start and see this logo, one of the logos of the Special Olympics. Uh, this, I guess, represents people holding hands. I'm not sure why there are three marks on each one, but it makes a very nice uh, logo and easily reproducible, small, large, right. whatever. And the next picture shows us, oh, whoa, I didn't expect that one next. Uh, let's see what's next. Um, keep going. This is just, it will just be a few quick, quick views, and we'll talk about them later as we look at them a little more. Uh, all right, now there, that one, and that's a good one. This is the one I was expecting to see next. Uh -huh. You have the Olympic hearts there, um, and above it, it uh, doesn't quite show in this picture, but you see the motto there, and the motto is, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt, which is a good motto. Right. Uh, and these the Olympians in the Special Olympics are invariably very cheerful looking, happy looking, smiling. Okay. Uh, and you'll see some pictures, pictures of that. Uh, but that's the, the motto, that, that, uh, that's the flag they're flying under, so to speak. Uh, now the, the uh, Special Olympics is not the same as the Paralympics. Right. And it's not directly connected with the regular Olympics. Right. Um, but it started really, the, the germ of it did begin with Eunice Kennedy. And I'm going to call her Eunice Kennedy rather than go through the whole uh, <laughs> Shriver thing each time. Um, but Eunice, Eunice Kennedy, on her large, on the large Kennedy estate in Potomac, Maryland, had a uh, what's referred to sometimes as the backyard, but she had plenty of space at any rate, and she began to hold uh, what what was known as uh, the what was a daily a daily camp. Oh, okay. uh, and the, the Shriver Shriver Games, as it were, in in their backyard. And what she had done, she had worked a lot with uh, handicapped people, mm -hmm. uh, and her interest stemmed from her elder sister Rosemary. Right who I believe was the first of the Kennedy and nine Kennedy children. Rosemary was, I guess, fairly seriously uh, mentally uh, had problems with that. But she and uh, Eunice 
were, were very close, and Eunice, of course, wasn't perfectly all right. Mm -hmm. So she knew the problems of the field, and she knew that there are really nice people in there uh, and all that. So she, she got started. Uh, this was in 1963. Okay. And meanwhile, in Chicago, in, uh, a young woman who was only 19 had uh, dropped out of college. She was born in 44. This was Anne McGlone, and she later married a man named Burke, so she became Anne Burke, which is a little easy to cope with. Um, but she went to work for the Chicago Park District, which is a very extensive one, mm -hmm. and she volunteered to be uh, one of the team leaders. They were setting up six teams of children who were handicapped, oh, mentally, handicapped mentally handicapped, but all right physically. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, she volunteered for that job, and she did beautifully at it, wonderfully at it. And she had some problems at first because nobody came. They set up these day camps and nobody showed up. And the problem seemed to be that families did not, to, did not want to um, admit. admit that they had, and right. certainly not sort of parade these people as over a freak show, you know, right. some, right. They, they didn't want that. Uh, but she, she coped with that problem. And the first, uh, when, when they got started, she said the first child that came didn't speak very much, couldn't speak very much really. But she thought, well, I'll just try and play, play catch if this child can catch. The child did. And a light bulb went on in her mind. She said, they may have difficulties in their mind in speaking and doing those things, but they, they're, they're physically they're all right. Uh -huh. they're, their reactions are fine. They can catch and do and so on. Um, so she got going, and it was a great success in the Chicago Park District. And to this day, I understand that it's the most extensive one in the entire really? country is in Chicago for the, for the handicapped. Mm -hmm. But she um, <clears throat> got the idea that this would be a good idea if we had a, a lot of them coming together from around the country. Mm -hmm. So she started working on that idea and found agreement amongst her peers there and got the idea to approach Eunice Kennedy Shriver, who was then the director of the Joseph P. Kennedy's foundation with lots of money uh -huh. to donate and help these things out, so she did. Uh, Eunice Kennedy Shriver uh, just grabbed the ball and oh, grabbed the imagine. bit and ran with right, it, grabbed her right. teeth and ran with it. Uh, so by the time 1963 came around then, uh, uh, the, uh, well, 19, uh, a few years later than that, because they did, didn't start working on, the, on this Olympic. And she was called an Olympic-like thing to do this. Okay. In 1967, she really started setting it up. Ann Burke did, started setting it up. And the Kennedys jumped right on in and gave money to it. And Chicago, she had lots of support there. Mayor Daley, you know, who was considered to be a crook by a lot of people. Right. I think he was fairly honest, but his henchmen were not so great. <laughs> but he, he just wanted to be mayor of Chicago, you right, know, right. Do, do good things for people, and he did. And so the Chicago Park stood behind her, Park District stood behind her. And the uh, uh, mayor got various support from some of the labor unions and things. That they didn't work free, but you know they they cooperated right, with it. Right. Uh, and the mayor even stepped in. She wanted fifteen hundred box lunches after the thing got going. Okay. And the, the manager of the park district of the concessions was supposed to cooperate with that, but he didn't. He was wasn't going to do it. So she told Mayor Daly. And Mayor Daly, in that wonderful kind of slow Chicago accent he had, he said, uh, he, he called, called the guy up and he said, say, I hear you're going to donate 1,500 box <laughs> lunches to the Special Olympics, what they called it then. Um, and the fellow, what did he say? Right. All right, so she got the, the box <laughs> lunches later on. Uh, uh, real spoil sport, Avery Brundage, who was on the Olympic board himself, the regular Olympics, uh -huh. Avery Brundage owned the LaSalle Hotel, one of the biggest hotels in Chicago, and he was going to sue the Special Olympics oh, really? for using the word Olympics okay. in their title. Right. Uh, they Actually, they, they weren't used in the official title then, they did later. But he was going to sue them for it and sh shut them down, as it were. So again, she went to Mayor Daley 
and Mayor Daley just let this guy know. He said, you know, I was talking to the fire chief the other day, and they've been hearing rumors that the LaSalle Hotel has serious code violations. <laughs> so this shows you that it's this brilliant way that they got around right. all kinds of, of problems. Right. Uh, a little pressure here and there. And sure enough, <laughs> the, the lawsuit disappeared in a puff of air. Well, they set it up beautifully. They had a swimming pool, a basketball court, and various things installed on Soldier Field. And they had gotten the use of Soldier Field, which is the big, I believe the biggest one in Chicago, biggest venue. Been to it a number of times, and it's very, a very important one. Parkland around it, right. it's nice. So, and they got all set. Well, they wound up having over a thousand people coming from the United States and Canada. And this later than uh, largely the work of Eunice Kennedy, who spread it around beautifully, and a lot of contact. And of course, more money flowed in. Uh, people did things to make money from bake sales on up to these shenanigans of right. Mayor Daley. Right. And they were held in July of, of 1960. Eight. 1968. And this was this very year of difficulties. Well, Eunice Kennedy not only showed up, but she reportedly was jumping into the pool with some of the some of the little people who were, I almost said retarded, but that's <laughs> forbidden now. Uh, they forbade that um, oh, long somewhere in the middle of 19, 19, in the 80s, I believe. You don't say that because it does imply oh, a certain amount of will. But these are people who are, for no fault of their own, just got a bad deal. Mm -hmm. And somebody here is, is really helping them. Now, let's look at some more pictures, please. We're going to look at, I think, uh, can we go back to the, the two people? The picture after the last one we saw, they should be right in order. And we can see, uh, well, that's Eunice Kennedy Shriver and somewhat later years. Um, with that wonderful thick Kennedy hair, you can tell she's a real Kennedy. And she was in there pitching the whole time. All uh, retained their interest through the years. And the, uh, this other lady now, Ann Burke, in the next picture, she dropped out of college at the age of 19 because she was dyslexic. Oh. So she knew what it was like to have some kind right. of a, have a hindrance difficulty, right. in, your, in your mind, in your head, that she couldn't do anything about, right. really. Well, though she, I guess, conquered some of that. But what she did in, in working for the district, as I said, she had great success uh, in working with these, these children. And then when she got the idea to have a gathering all coming together, uh, she approached uh, Eunice Kennedy, and Eunice Kennedy uh, cooperated. Now, this lady, Ann Burke, uh, stayed with them for, uh, she also ran the game two years later in 70. But she then, uh, went back to school. Remember, she hadn't finished college. Mm -hmm. She went back to college, finished off, went to law school, and became a judge in the Illinois state court really? system. And she is to this day, she's still alive. She became, well, on the Supreme Court, she's been for many years, the Illinois Supreme Court, but retained her interest in it and her good, her good works. So she was, of course, working flat out, getting these things going. And the next picture is a shot I couldn't resist. This is Mayor Daley. <laughs> this is your political boss, but a very benevolent one. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who said, uh, well, we might just have to inspect your hotel you know, right. if all these things in <laughs> opposition disappeared. <laughs> uh, the Chicago Tribune didn't like it, but he brought them around. Even the Republican, he was Democrat, uh, even the Republican business people in Chicago liked him because he was good. He was good for the city. Yeah. But he, uh, Anyway, we'll go on now to the next picture. So help. Now this one I think is from a different Olympic, but it's the only picture I could find of two people who were on the Olympic, the staff, you know, the teachers and the, uh, the trainers and all. And here is a, uh, one of the they're lighting the flame. Lighting and the here's this little person color. in the middle uh, actually doing the, the lighting. Uh -huh. one, of the, uh, one of the Olympians doing that and you see of course, the seats are down in the, that might very well be at Soldier Field, but just a little later. Uh, another picture will show us. A few years later, now here's, they're in Soldier Field, and that's Ann Burke on the left, and you have um, Mayor Washington 
later on, uh, later on was mayor, and he supported it. And the, the, the heavy set man with the hand up, he's a, a team member of the Chicago Bears. That was their, their home stadium for a long time. So things are, are going on, and you, you can see there's, there's an important venue. Uh, and that, that was a, they were up in the 80s at that point. They must have been, you know, because Harold Washington was mayor in the mm -hmm. mid 80s. So going on, we see another picture. We're going to see a little series of just typical things. Now here's bowling. Bowling was one of the original things they had in it. And here's this yeah, young long, lady. Long is, is, uh, yeah, she's bowling. And not another one. Next picture. And here's, so we races. have some things about foot races, but here's a wheel, a wheel uh -huh. race. Uh -huh. And here's, she's making along on the course, and of course not fast. I don't know if they had music behind some of these things. They might have, uh, because they, otherwise, some of them were uh, understandably a little slower. Uh -huh. But sure. uh, next picture would be, yeah, here's, uh, here's one of the foot races. Happy look on face, uh -huh. you know, that, and the, the proper, uh, stance and everything for running, just like any any sure, other like runner. Any runner. Another picture will show us. Uh, go on to the next, please. This is also a foot race. Uh, one of the people who are uh, have their motion and everything. Man. And it looks again just like in any you know park or any venue. People are doing it. Next picture. And here's somebody on the rings. And that's not an easy sport to no, do, I understand. Not. Pretty tough. And he's out in the middle of nowhere on it, but he's you know, doing a good yeah. job. Uh, and next one. And these two, I'm not sure, either they're doing some sort of gymnastic thing, or these four, because you see there are some more, there are going to be some more to the left, mm -hmm. or whether it's dancing of some kind, or some sort of uh, game, a native game from, from a foreign land. I don't know. But again, they're, 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 they're they're active, they're in the yep. posture, it's good, they're doing things. Right. And the next picture, I love this picture, two of them, they even participated. I, I don't think they had ice skating at, well, they might have at first, because they had a, a ice rink, mm -hmm. a Teflon ice rink at that very first one. Uh, but, but there they are, and they're, they're not turning curly cues the way the others did, or the fancy but ones do. Being able to skate in rhythm is, is great. But yeah. And you notice that they're not, they're not long-trained athletes. They don't have those big, bulgy leg right, muscles right. the others do. But what a nice picture, you know, just yes, yes. enjoying themselves and <clears throat> somebody winning a, a medal for it. And on to the next. This is a postage stamp that was issued. Uh, they also have uh, Winter Olympics. Now, the, uh, the Special Olympics uh, meets every, four, every uh, two years, but any given summer or winter will be every four years. This year and will be what will be the summer, say, and the next year will be, uh, next two years will be the winter, and then okay. two years later will be the summer. Same as the regular yeah. Olympics then? Uh, close to it. Now you see that logo again in the middle, and it's, it's a nice stamp. Uh, and the next picture, please. Now here is one of, uh, we have three lovely shots of happy winners. Right. And here's one of the, you know, the victory kiss. Uh, yeah, is a good one there. It looks as though it might have been swimming. The other person has a, some kind of a cap on. Uh, next picture, and this one I love. Can you uh, blow that up a little bit? I, I zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure if it'll do it here. Probably not. But the, uh, that's Ann Burke on the left, uh -huh. again. And in later year, here she Justice of the Illinois Supreme Court, and she's down there, and she's flexing her muscles too, and it's probably the little girl's jacket that's around, you know, her oh. her neck. But there's a little child with this happy look on her face, yeah. you know, I, I won, and all that. And another one shows a uh, final picture. That I think we're going to see. We'll show the uh, Special Olympics again, another color variant, uh, and the official title. And then back to that picture we just had, you see two small pictures on there. And I wish you could see them closer, but those three teenage boys, you know, just as happy as, as clams at high tide, and they're, they're winning and so on. And the little girl on the right. Yes. 
proudly precious. bearing her number. I hope you can see her facial expression because she's just thrilled to death. Well, now this, in some way, when you look at the regular Olympics, you don't always see such happy, relaxed no, looks on don't. their face because they're trying, you know, right. and they know what can go wrong. Right. These people often don't, of course. Right. They're just so, there for the fun more than anything this, else, and the companionship. And, and to, to bring them out of it. They, right. they can do more things if they are obliged to do right, more right. things. I think that speaks uh, to the families, too, that uh, are dealing with these, these youngsters that seem to be left out of everything. And That's give them true. a chance to be a part of it. I know my granddaughter worked with a theater group uh, that's ah. in the area that worked with with people like this, and they put on plays that the yeah. the people would, they themselves would develop, and uh, it gave them a great deal of satisfaction to not only know there were people who were sort of outsiders like they were. Mm -hmm but they could get together and accomplish something that people would actually pay to come and see. Yeah. 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 Some probably were aware, but others might have been more like, uh, more like children in a way. Yes. That you don't know the pitfalls and you don't realize and you're growing toward right. something. Right. I think many families might also have felt protective that they didn't want them Certainly. exploited. They didn't want them to be ridiculed and, yes. uh, and taunted. Well, and pictures, you know, that are sort of making, again, circus out of them. Right. Uh, but in fact, there are several pictures that I found uh, online that I didn't include because I think they, uh, well, they're, they're just more extreme cases, mm -hmm. and I don't think this is the right place to show right. that. Right. They were in uh, oh. participating in all this right. stuff just fine, but uh, rightly or wrongly, there are, are many, many aspects to it. But as it got going then, uh, the first one had over a thousand, and they were from the, from the United States and uh, Canada. Uh -huh. And later ones, now the one, uh, the one this year, and I'm not really including anything about it because the uh, internet is full of stuff about, about the thing. You can get wonderful, there are some uh, uh, videos of it on, but they're, they're longish. But if you really want to see that, but again, why it was not more publicized, uh, I don't know. I can't imagine. But the the early ones, uh, the early ones got I think better in in some ways. Certainly when it was started, they got better ways. Mm -hmm. Now there was some resistance to starting it right from from the very beginning. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, and it was mainly not from. Well, I, I shouldn't say mainly. Some of it, of course, came from families that wanted to want to see it started, but the Chicago Tribune was way against it. Really? You know, the home, the home newspaper, uh -huh. so to speak, from for where they got going. Um, I, I, I don't know why that's why that's the case, but others uh, disagreed with it just on grounds that oh, you shouldn't shouldn't show people who are not not perfect. Yeah, probably uh, thinking they were going to exploit them. Possibly so. Yeah. But when they discovered that that certainly was was not the not going to be the case, mm -hmm. but in in for um, uh, Ann Burke, now what what Ann did when uh, when she went back and got all these uh, degrees and became a, a judge afterward, uh, she also married and had four children and they adopted a fifth child. They were all normal. They adopted a fifth child who was. Uh, handicapped, mm -hmm. mentally handicapped, and was was a child of someone who was a drug addict, oh. mm -hmm. and apparently a hopeless drug addict, mm -hmm. because that uh, they adopted it and the mother sort of drops off the screen, mm -hmm. presumably she didn't live too long, but when uh, when Ann Burke married, she married a Chicago uh, a politician, an alderman, and that didn't didn't do any harm either on her on her. Uh, uh, points of contact right. and able to, being able to get things done. Right. Uh, what she did uh, when when she ran it in the 70s, I think she realized that it was going to take more than, than just her, and then even with Eunice Kennedy right. on board uh, and the, the money and the attending these things and, and putting this cachet on it, that this um, important people came. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and, and the, the uh, Chicago Bears guy coming, yeah. and you had, uh, oh, I've forgotten who the, there were a couple of pe people in the, in the swim, uh, celebrities in the world of swimming, but all kinds of people come across this. Now, I don't know all of the countries that are involved in it, but I know, I think the maximum number of countries I saw participating was a hundred and, I think it was 170, Wonderful. something like that. Uh, so other countries are getting the mm -hmm. picture. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of this uh, also stemmed from the fact that uh, Ann Burke from the very beginning wanted to get these people back into society. Right. And this was something that you were touching upon right. here. Let them be accepted yes. for what they do have to offer. Let them be accepted and uh, let them uh, let them know that, right, that right. they were accepted and be with other It was people. always fun after these plays were put on, we'd sort of mingle out in the lobby and, and the, the actors were always so happy. Uh -huh. you know? And it just, uh, and they were so grateful to have you tell them how much that yes. you appreciated what they had done. Yes. And they, they just, all. you know, it was that, you could see that standing up straighter and feeling better about themselves. Yes. Well, the idea of not just trying to talk people into, or, or psychoanalyze them or whatever, into being better, but actually do things. Now, like right off the bat, when she discovered it, uh, they're, they're all right physically sure. by just tossing a ball to this child, and the, ball, the child caught it and tossed it back. Uh -huh. And then they, they realized if the child doesn't automatically catch it, they do it a few times, it catches on. Uh -huh. Realize, you don't, you don't always do something right the first time. Right, right. But then after that, the child, uh, they would demonstrate. And they had, she used to go, for instance, uh, there was uh, one of the Chicago Park District places where there was a pool. Some man was swimming in the pool when a swimming laps. And she, she was just getting going on this. And she said, if I, uh, would you mind sort of mentoring this child? Where we're teaching this child to swim, and the man said, "No, sure." So he swims this little kid and holds it up, and it helps swimming. So she, after that, she got other children, normal children, mm -hmm. in other park activities, and also they were doing these things all year. It wasn't just like the the Olympics where you right. you train independently, train. Right. train hard all year, and then you come and do your thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that. They kept at them all year. And one of the bills, it was one I think that. Uh, uh, George Bush Jr. Uh, entered, well, I don't know if he introduced it uh, and signed no, we, on. We and need that was to wrap it up here. 2004 or something. And th this bill was, wait a minute, um, the special, it was 2004, Special Olympics <coughs> Sport and Empowerment Act of 2004, authorizing $15 million per year over five years to fund the growth of Special Olympics and initiatives that foster greater understanding and respect, respect for people with intellectual disabilities. That's great. So what, Thank you, know, you so much, Jane. We're, I think we're over time.